Okay, so I thought I would show a newer tutorial on how I do the snake insert for my nappies. Um, the previous one I've done, it was probably worse lighting than this is because it's around four o'clock in the morning here in Queensland. Um, but I just wanted to see if maybe this will help end a bit more nicely. So I know my previous video, I ended in the middle of the insert, but now I end at the towards the end of the snake. So it just makes a much neater finish. Uh, and obviously I've learned a lot over the months that I've been doing this, um, but hopefully this helps. So first off, these are my settings. So I use a three, three for my needles and then like a just past the three and a three and in between this for my stitch length and my differential feed is two. This is probably your most important number here because when you're dealing with thick fabrics, you do want to have this at a higher setting. Okay, because that helps feed the fabric through. Okay, um, now I've got maxi lock in my, uh, in the upper looper, so in this one, to give the pretty little swirl that I like. And then the other ones I just have a 100% uh, polyester overlocking thread in like a, I can't remember what they call this, but I think it might be like eggshell, no, I don't think it's eggshell. It's like a pale yellow, but it, it goes really nice with the rainbow. So anyway, so I have my inserts laid out here. So I use a suede top cloth. So this is my uh, stay dry layer. And then I have two layers of heavy bamboo fleece, which is 500 GSM. So I've just traced it onto my bamboo and then I put my suede cloth on top. Um, I use the Crayola washable marker, the kid pens, um, they're great, you know, but I cut off the line anyway, so you can't see it. Uh, so I'll just give you a bit of a shot here. There we go. So make sure when you're cutting your suede cloth top that it is bigger than your line. And also when you're cutting out your insert, you don't want to cut on the line unless you're quite proficient at surging on or overlocking on the line. Um, because not everyone's proficient at that. So I, I do recommend if you're learning, give yourself a little bit of space, you know, maybe half a centimetre, um, even a centimetre when you're still learning. So you can see here I've got some space between there. Obviously around my edges it's a bit short, but I'm pretty confident with my edges. So, but if you're learning, definitely give yourself a bit more space. Okay. Um, I use basting spray, 505 basting spray, if you can <laughs> see it up there. So um, that's the one I use. It's the one, it washes out in a warm wash. It's really great. Uh, it's not too sticky that you can't pull stuff apart and then redo it. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this at an angle so that you can go, you guys can see. Uh, I do apologize if I knock the camera. Uh, normally, my husband would be my cameraman, but he is asleep. Well, the whole house is asleep. Even my dog's asleep. So, <laughs> all right. So let's see. Now I need to do this at an angle where I can actually show you what I'm doing, but also actually overlook. So my top of my insert will be towards the back of the machine. I'm actually going to start at the bottom of my snake. Let's flip off there. So this is the bottom of my snake. I'm going to start about, where's the bottom? I'm gonna start probably about here. And then eventually when I come back around, I'll overlock this side. Okay, now lift your presser foot up, put it under the knife. Now I sew in diagonal to my lines. So if I just give you a quick look. I'm actually diagonal to the line. Uh, so I go diagonal till I hit the line and then it'll be straight. Okay. So make sure you press the foots down before you start overlocking. Okay, so I've just hit my line. Now I'm going to straighten my fabric on this side. Okay. All right, now I'm straight. So following the line, now I'm coming into a curve. So you always would like to push your fabric to the knife. So here's my knife. 
I'm going to be pushing my fabric to it, okay? My hand, my left hand is always on the bed of the overlocker, but I'm always pushing my right into the knife. And I'm just, see how I'm pushing that in? Um, so this hand really just kind of stabilizes, but this hand's doing all the work. So a typical, you know, a righty or a lefty, it's always doing the work. So um, basically you're pushing that into the knife. Okay, now I'm back on the straight. So what I do is I just straighten up my insert. And I'm, just, I'm cutting on my line. So my knife is always going to that blue line. Uh, hopefully it shows on camera, but there is a blue line. There. Now go as fast or as slow as you want. When you're learning, obviously slower is better. Okay, so I'm coming into a curve. So the top of my insert does a curve for the butt. So with these curves, um, because it kind of goes like this, you want to pull your fabric. So pull it on the end, just ever slightly. So then it does like a little concave there. Again, pushing. All right. Again, pushing. Now it's coming down diagonal. Let's pop that out of the way. Okay, then you're coming back to obviously the other side of this little concave so you can see. No, you can't see. Okay. You can see how that's gone up. So this is obviously coming down on the other side. So basically on the opposite side, you just want to pull just your fabric, just a little bit to give it that little bit of a pull. Okay, so this is obviously where we've started. So you can see how that's not so pretty, but that's why I always start diagonally and it's always good to start with extra on the sides um, because that gets cut off, okay? So you can see here, I'm very close to where I'm starting. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut on the line, that hopefully shows, and then I'm just going to keep going until I get to about here and then run off the back of the machine. Let's see if I can somehow get this. Okay. Without knocking the camera over. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So I've cut off my tail. So I'm no longer cutting any more fabric with the knife. I'm just literally running over the stitches that I've already sewn. And straight off the back of the overlocker. And then that's it. And then basically, oh, there we go. So you'd pull these little threads here so these would tighten just here. Let's see if I do that on camera. Okay. And then you get your little, uh, so you can see where I've locked my stitches. So that's where I've started. And then I've gone over, locked them, and run off the back. And then what I do is I use my little uh, thread loop. Uh, I don't actually know the fancy name of it. Um, but I did put it in the sew along group, <laughs> if anyone saw that. Um, but yeah, so basically I just get my thread and I put the, about here, and I thread it around the corner and then I just cut, cut it off for you. Okay, so... That's it, let's have a look at our handiwork, okay? So you can see where I was doing the concaves. So you go up and then you go down. And then that's where I've ended. So hopefully that helps you and hopefully it's a little bit better than my previous one. Thank you.